Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we go over how to create and export a tempo map to live drums inside Studio One. I was recently working at another studio recording a band called the Sun Dogs at Backroom Studios in New Jersey. We were doing the drums live, and we did the click track to the intro of the song, but after the entire band came in, they wanted more of a live feel. I was fine with this because it really gave us the groove that we were looking for. But later on, we're going to want to add some MIDI information and some synthesizers to this track. To really lock things in, I'm going to go ahead and make a tempo map so that I can send it to the band's leader and he can share it with every other member of the band. They'll write additional parts and then we'll put it all together in the final mix. Let's dive into the DAW and take a look at what we're talking about. So here we are inside the session, and I just want to show you what I'm talking about real quick. If I zoom all the way out and scroll over, you can see my tempo map that I've already done a lot of the work for is all over the place. But at the intro, it's a nice solid line all the way through. The tempo was consistent here, and it was actually very minimal things happening with the drums. If we go all the way over and just listen to our drums... That's it. They do this for about 32 measures. And then once the full band comes in, they wanted more of that groove because they were all playing together anyway. We had to retract this one song in a single day. So we made compromises and just said, you know what, let's all track together and get the feel of the song more so than it being perfect. So later on in the song, I'm going to jump to the first pre-chorus by using shift N to go to the, my next markers and we'll zoom in. This is where the whole band came in and the tempos just started to be whatever it was as the groove was. Let's take a listen to the drums without the click track in and you can see that they are moving around a little bit. Now it's very minimal. It started at 130 beats per minute and if we go into here and raise this up, you can see it doesn't deviate a lot. 128, 129.6, 127. Really, these changes measure by measure are not big. You're not gonna notice them. But overall, as you go through the song, you will see and feel increases. Like over here during the chorus, where everybody was a little excited, we got a little quick. And so if I play this part, versus over here. You can see it got a little bit faster in the chorus. There was a lot more energy. And if we zoom out, it's gonna look crazy because I've extended the tempo track here, but there are a lot of deviations. In the middle section here, there's a little bit of a dip. And then you can see how the band was playing with each other through all these different changes. These big spikes that you're seeing that are jumping out are really only just one measure. And it looks worse because of the size of my tempo track. If I was going to bring this back down and reduce the scale, you can really see it's not that bad at all. Okay, so let's jump to the end and I'll show you how to make the tempo map. Okay, so one thing I want to show you real quick is my quantize settings. I'm just strictly on the whole note. I'm on the beat. I just want beat one. I'm on bars and I'm on adaptive. So what I can do is come over and simply click on my tempo track and this will add a node. But this may not line up with this beat right here. So let's zoom way in and see what we got going on. This one actually does, so we're gonna leave it as it is. But let's go to the next bar, 173. If everything was the same, you could see that the drummer was very early. But what we wanna do is create a tempo map to what he actually did. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom all the way in. And with this node right here, is if you hold Command on a Mac or Control on a PC, you get this new tool. And this allows me to actually slide the bar over to this first hit. And you can see in the dialog box right there that it's actually gonna increase the beats per minute of the previous bar to 134 beats per minute. When I let go of the mouse, 
it changes it. And now it is dead on for where that downbeat is. Zooming out, we can see that there's that increase, 134 and a half from 130. We'll continue on doing this for all the remaining measures. And I'll fast forward. And there it is. That's the last one, because that's the last hit of the song. So now we can see that we have a new tempo map created on the groove of this performance. If we take a listen and turn the click track on, every downbeat of every new bar will line up, and the subsequent beats within there should line up as well. There might be a little variation, because we're not going into every single beat. We just want the downbeat of the bar. Okay, so what I've done real quick is I've rendered a little section of the metronome and I just created a little loop. Then if you go down here to metronome and hit the wrench, you're able to render your click track. And I needed to do this so that I could show you guys what's going on with the click track. And I just did render the loop. Uh, you can do the entire timeline and then this way you have a separate track created. Or if you are just tracking and you don't need to render, you, the keyboard shortcut of C will turn the click track on for the appropriate outputs that have the click track enabled for them. So now what we can do is we can listen to this last little section with our click track and see if everything lines up. sounded pretty good to me. If this was a static tempo, obviously things would be way off. Now that we've created our tempo track, we need to export the tempo. And the way to do that is you go to File, Save As. You can choose the location of this file where you want it to go. For this example, we'll just do the desktop. And all of this is fine for me, but this extension is going to change because down here, and you can do this on Windows as well. You can change to a MIDI file. The MIDI file is what will hold the tempo track. It will also hold your markers so that you can import those into another DAW for any type of additional mixing or production work. When you hit save, you may get this pop-up and the .mid versus .midi are pretty much the same. Pro Tools uses .mid and most of the other DAWs .midi. So you can just hit use MIDI format because the other DAWs, they'll know what to pull from this MIDI file. And that's pretty much it. You can then send the stems of the song plus this MIDI file to anybody in a band or another producer to be able to have the proper tempo and do any kind of additional mixing or production work that is needed on the song. They'll have to import that MIDI file into their DAW of choice in the correct way to do it for that program. Most of them these days, it's pretty much just drag and drop. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For more, visit timflansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.